Hello, my name is Tony Felici, and I'm the senior pastor here at Holiday Park United Methodist Church in Plum Borough, where Christ is King, the Holy Spirit inspires, people's lives are being transformed on a daily basis, all to the glory of God. And we're so glad that you have joined us for this broadcast today on Cornerstone TV's Faith and Family Channel. Won't you join us to worship our Lord? Well, good morning. We are truly blessed that you are here today. Uh, you're obviously those folks are here in our sanctuary today, as well as the YouTube audience at home. There it is. Every day you are blessed by God. So thank you so much for being here with us. And God thanks you, too. All right, moving on. Everyone's welcome here. Obviously, we have two in-person services every Sunday at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Certainly come to one of those. Sunday school, of course, is after our, 10, uh, our uh, children's sermon at uh, 10 a.m. here today. And uh, our nursery is available for babies through two. And the junior senior high continues to meet on Sunday evenings at 5. For news and activities, current news and activities, please go to either our Facebook page or our website. Everything is there. Where we are now, we have exciting news. You heard last week that we were able to fully fund the water bowl hole in the uh, Kojikota, and we met that within less than four weeks. It was totally amazing, and we wanted to share the good news. We had a Zoom call with the Zimbabwe folks. Just this Monday, we did the big reveal. Pat Nelson, our district superintendent, started off with news about our district. We are providing some COVID kits to them with uh, sanitizer, face masks, and uh, gloves, and some more things that will eventually get to them. Uh, they still need about $2,000 from our district to allow that to happen. So she was uh, giving them some good news to start with, and they are anxiously looking forward to that. And then came the big reveal about the borehole. The uh, Harare West District Superintendent and Asukat Sandy was listening patiently as we described our progress week over week over week that you saw as we were moving along in those four weeks. But we, re we let it out a little bit at a time. But in the end, we shared that the borehole was fully funded and she just started clapping. Talk about happy, there was joy in the air. She said, yeah, woo, just a few months in office. She started just this January, and great things are happening like this. She continued, you know, I wish it would be physically together, and then you can see how happy and excited I am. But our God knows all those people. Our God knows every family, every individual. Yes, and your delegation, an extended family. I don't know how you can read what is in my heart. I don't know how many times I can say, be blessed. I pray that you live a long life. May God continue his blessing upon you, prayers for you to live long and be blessed. Be protected from poverty. Be protected from any other thing you can think of that can make you miserable. Masvita, masvita, masvita. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Even on the Zoom, we were able to see the excitement and joy that this New Borehole is going to bring to the people of Kojakota their expression of gratitude for us coming alongside to help them with this project. And I thank you very much for your generous contributions and how quickly we were able to fund this borehole to make it possible. We will be keeping you updated on what the progress is because the money is the first part and then they go through all the steps and finding the contractor and getting that all done. And I really ask that you pray that when the borehole is drilled, that they find water. That's not a given. High probability, but we must pray that they will 
find water. And as we are blessed to be a blessing, we will continue to support other projects in Zimbabwe. You can look forward to other happen happenings and things that we will be doing with our partners here in Zimbabwe. And we know that through all these blessings and the relationship that we have, that God is good. Making us pretty day. Okay, that's uh, May 8th. I want you to call David Hansen or send him an email, uh, you know, sign up for that. Going to do some weeding and mulching. Uh, starts at 9 a.m. on uh, Saturday, May 8th. National Day of Prayer is May 6th. We're going to have a service at noon here, officiated by uh, Pastor Felici in the sanctuary. That's a Thursday. So uh, please keep that in mind. Uh, schedule that if you can here to be here. Uh, we, the intent is to live stream this, so, uh, but we would like to see you here in the sanctuary as well. Good morning. Praise God that we can gather in his presence in this sanctuary, in the sanctuary in your home or wherever you are gathered in God's presence. Please join me in our greeting. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Now, please join me in our opening prayer. Oh God, our guide and our guardian, you have led us apart from the busy world into the quiet of your house. Enable us to do more perfectly the work which you have called us, that we may not fear the coming of the night when we shall resign into your hands the task which you committed to us. So we may worship you, not with our lips at this hour, but in word and deed all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Sinful though we 
Hello, hello. Well, we get to talk about sheep this Sunday. This is the Good Shepherd Sunday. And that's another name that we use to describe Jesus. And we talk about Jesus with different names because it shows us the different uh, ways that Jesus cares for us. So that's why we talk about Jesus being a good shepherd. We're going to talk about those characteristics too. Now, what do shepherds take care of? Sheep, right, sheep. So, and we know sheep come in all different shapes and sizes like we do, right? What, 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 Josh? Cuz, yes, because they take care of sheep and animals. So shepherds take care of sheep and sheep come in all different sizes. Mm -hmm. So sometimes sheep are, have like black fuzzy wool or they have spots on their wool or they have white wool or they have dark faces or light faces or splotchy faces. Sometimes they have big ears. Have you seen sheep with really big floppy ears? Yeah. And sometimes they really have tiny little ears too. And they're big and little and all of that, right? Well, there was one sheep in particular that was really naughty. And sheep need a shepherd because they like to be taken care of. They have to be kept safe from predators, and they have to come in to the from the pastures at night to be kept safe, and they have to make sure that they're taken care of. And one very important job that shepherds do every year is they shear the sheep. Now, do you know what shearing the sheep is? What? Well, not sharing, but that's good. They do share food, but shearing the sheep. Your parents kind of do this for you, too, when they take you to get a haircut. Right, right. They cut off all of their wool, and they kind of have to do that because their wool is like your hair. It just would keep growing and growing if they didn't do anything with it, right? So they do that every year. They shear the sheep, and it's kind of a big fun thing that they do for the sheep. Well, this sheep in particular decided, must have decided on his own that he just didn't want to have anything to do with that, and so he hid. Now, they, they named him Shrek after the fact. So if you Google, if you're at home and you Google Shrek the sheep, have you seen this before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I printed out a couple of pictures for you, but if you're at home, you can Google Shrek the sheep and see what he looked like. So he hid in a cave for six years. So I'll hold this up so that everybody can kind of see. Look what happened to him. So his face, his little nose is right there. Can you see that? Where my fingers are, that's where his nose is. Can you tell that's a sheep? What happened to him? His wool kept growing and growing and growing and growing, and without the shepherd around to shear him, growing and growing. Nobody was there to take care of him. He thought he could do it himself, and he hid in the cave away from the shepherd, and look what happened to him. He was okay for a little while, but he looks really funny, right? So eventually, he had so much wool that they did end up catching him because <laughs> he was so fluffy, he couldn't get away. So thankfully, the shepherds caught him. So look what happened. So now, that's, can you see that little sheep under all that wool? He's kind of right in the middle. You can see his legs there. But do you see where my fingers are? That's how far they, 
they cut enough wool off of him to make at least six men's suits, enough suits that would fit Mr. Tom. Six suits. And Mr. Tom's a pretty big guy. He's pretty tall. That would make a lot of clothing just from one sheep. And he was still a tiny little sheep underneath. So the whole point is, is that we need the shepherd. We might not think, like Shrek, he didn't think he needed the shepherd, but did he really need a shepherd to take care of him? Yes, he did. And so sometimes we make the mistake with, with God that we think, well, we don't really need God to take care of us. We can do things ourselves, and that might work for a little while. We might be okay for a little while. We might get to do things okay for a little while, and it might work out for us. But then something happens, and we realize we really do need to ask God for help, and we really do need his guiding hand to take care of us. And so that's what we have to remember. And it's better if we just stick with God from the beginning so that he can continually take care of us so that maybe we don't get into a bigger pickle like our buddy Shrek where we get so deep into trouble that it's hard to find a way out. Okay? So we'll remember that today. We're going to go downstairs and talk with Miss Lucy more about shepherds and sheep. And Miss Emma's downstairs too today with a special craft for us. So before we head downstairs, let's bow our heads and pray, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that we are children of God. We thank you that we are like sheep and that you are our shepherd and that you take care of us and protect us, and that you know what's best for us, Lord. Thank you for this day, Father, and thank you that you continue to guide us through this life. In Jesus' name, amen. New Testament reading, Acts 4, verses 5 through 12. The next day, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for being the author of our salvation. We praise you this morning and we worship you because there is no other name under heaven that can save us. You are our Lord and our God, and we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit in our lives. The same Spirit that empowered Peter to boldly speak to the temple authorities concerning where the power came from that enabled them to heal a lame man. The lame man standing before them was proof of Jesus' power to heal and to save. 
The proof was standing right before the religious leaders, and they still could not see it. Father, forgive us when that very same thing happens to us. We so often miss the evidence of your power at work right in front of us. We miss opportunities to boldly speak out about you and to use our lives to model your love. We are so busy trying to rely on our own power that we have trouble letting your power take control. We pray, Father, that we would loosen our grip on our lives and turn to you so that the power of your love would strip away our weaknesses and empower us to be your servants. And finally, Father, we thank you that our salvation is totally dependent on the power of your love. Peter tells the religious leaders that even though they rejected and crucified Jesus, he turned out to be the foundation of our salvation. And we thank you. Thank you, Father, for your power and your presence when we go through difficult times. Thank you that we can share our problems with you and be confident that you will never abandon us. We pray for all those who are facing health concerns, that your power would lift them up and give them peace. Comfort those who are grieving. Help us to repair our broken relationships. Be with those who are lonely, depressed, or may be feeling like they have lost hope. We pray that the leaders of our world, our country, our communities, our workplaces, our schools, and our churches would all look to your wisdom. And Father, we pray that you come and be with us right now as all of us in this room and at home Join together to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Well, ever since it was first written and read, the book of James has been a bit controversial because it seems to contradict all of the New Testament writings about everything being the grace of God, the mercy of God, and all about Him. In the book of James, as a matter of fact, when, it was, when the Bible was being canonized, this was only a last consideration to, to, to add this to the New Testament Scripture. Because again, it seemed to contradict what was being said. Now my salvation verse is Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. And Paul said boldly to the church, he said, For by grace... His grace, you and I have been saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, when James tells us, it seems like it's something different. It seems like it's the counter to that. But what he's telling us, he says that faith without works is dead and useless. Remember the Rich Mullins song, this is a number of years ago, and I think it was called Screen Door, and, and in the song, the lyrics had something to the effect of it's, it's like a screen door on a submarine. Faith without works is like a screen door without a submarine. 
And what James is telling us, and, and what is our stewardship nugget for this morning, is very, very simply that not just an intellectual faith, not just an acknowledgement of God with our mind, because the demons and Satan himself acknowledge who God is. They know who God is. But to allow that to be a belief in our heart that changes the way that we live. And that's what he's telling us. He says, faith, this precious gift of God, without allowing that to manifest in these anointed works, is dead and useless. Praise God from Father God, we return now but a mere portion of that which you so graciously and generously give to us. And Father, it is our prayer, as James tells us, may our faith not be dead. May our faith lead us to the works that glorify you. We pray your blessing, dear God, upon both gift and giver. Pray that we can be stewards not just of the finances that you give to us and the possessions that you generously share with us, but our time and our talent as well. We pray your blessing, dear God, upon our family this day as we return this small portion back to you. And all of God's people say, amen. You may be seated. And 
teach me humbly to receive the sun and rain of your sovereignty. Each strand of sorrow has a place within this tapestry of grace. So through the trials I choose to say. perfect will in your perfect Thank you, Dan. Your perfect will in perfect way. Thank you, dear God. Wow. Well, what a pleasure and privilege for us to be able to gather again on a Sunday morning here in this beautiful sanctuary in the presence of Almighty God. Thank you, dear God. The Apostle Paul said many, many times in his letters to the New Testament churches, he would tell them that I've learned that in whatever state I'm in, to give God the glory and the praise. We know of the story where he was in the Philippian jail and and literally in in the wee hours of the morning, he was probably ill, he had no finances, he had nothing. But he was scaring the other prisoners to death and the jailer to death because this man's praising God. And his lesson to us, his testimony to us is that in whatever state I'm in, I've been rich, I've been poor, I've been empty, I've been filled, I've been sick, I've been healed, but in whatever state I'm in, I give glory to my Lord and Savior. Well, there's a lesson in that for us, and especially as we are now, I believe, through the the worst portion of the pandemic of this last year. It has caused us all to take a a real stock in normal, in status quo, hasn't it? It's changed a lot about our lives. It's changed a lot about our jobs and our careers. It's changed a lot about ministry. It's a, a moving target in trying to reach people with the gospel. Everything has changed as a result of this. And I believe to those that have been obedient to God, that have looked to God, to look to his Holy Spirit, I believe that God has blessed us with the steps that we are to take. That's his promise to us, that he will guide us. And for Lucy and me, one of the new normals that we have, last year about this time, all of the productions were canceled at Cornerstone Television. And so there were limited studio productions, but nothing out in the field. Everything was very, very limited. And God used that to change our normal. Uh, In the past, with our Faith and Family channel, we would do studio productions, or we would do what are called EFP productions, where we'd go out and, and do these productions in the field, and I would have a crew of people. Well, because of this new normal, Lucy became my crew. And I have to tell you, she is just the most extraordinary blessing in this. God has anointed her, and we have just had a run for this last year of doing these beautiful productions from iconic places all throughout western and central Pennsylvania. We just completed our our spring series, a, a whole new group of a dozen for the spring, and it included the construction site next to PNC Park, It included the world's steepest street. I don't know if you know this, but right in Beachview is the world's steepest street. It's a 37-degree angle, and you have to go out there sometime to see it, to believe it. It's an old cobblestone street, and and God blessed us to do a production there. And so we've been out and about, and we're having a blast doing these anointed one-minute messages. One that we just did last week and is really the catalyst for our lesson today, is one that we did at a 600-acre sheep farm. 
Now, 600 acres is big. That's 220 feet by 220 feet. It's 600 of those. And it's over in Bedford County. And a wonderful family, the Monsoor family that uh, Jack and Kathy, we got to meet them and, and their grandchildren. And they very graciously hosted us for this one minute message that we wanted to do there. And it was interesting because when we got there, they have over 2,000 sheep. And, and she was telling me about how this is a, a very, uh, very important time for what they do for their business because this is called lambing season. What that means is that the ewes are impregnated and then they are carrying this young lamb until about this time of the year. And so throughout April then is lambing season when these lambs are born. Now, in the meantime, when they're near giving birth to these lambs, the ewes become rotund and they're, they're off balance. Okay, they're, they're out of whack, they're top heavy. They just still have these four little spindly legs, but they have this big old body up on top of that. And if they fall, it, it, it was just beautiful, the rolling hills where, where these sheep were. If they get tipped on their side, it's a very dangerous situation to the lamb and, and to, the, uh, to, the, to the mother because it is called downcast. And, and when the, the sheep, when these females, if they were to get tipped on their side, they do not have the ability to right themselves. Now, they would have the same reaction that you and I have. When they get tipped, they, they literally, they kick frantically, and the, the four legs are just going as fast as you can barely see them move. But it's only when they stop kicking that literally the shepherd can come over and rescue them. I, I had read about that back in biblical times where the good shepherd, and, and literally what the good shepherd would have to do is, you, have you ever fallen asleep on your side and, and your arm goes to sleep? And, and, and you get up and, and you just have no, no motion in it, you have no movement in it. Well, that's what happens to the, to the sheep's body, to the legs, because the weight of this lamb literally asphyxiates both the, the mother and the lamb. And so the, the good shepherd, uh, once the sheep stop kicking, the, the good shepherd then will massage the legs to bring blood flow back into the legs and then literally hold the lamb in, in, in his or her arms so that they can put the sheep upright and now it's able to stand on its own. It's called downcast. Well, think in your life how many times circumstances knock us for a loop. And you've heard that expression. Boy, I'm just thrown for a loop. I, I never expected the doctor to say that. I never expected my husband to say that. I never expected my boss to say that. I never expected that news. And it's really thrown me for a loop. We're downcast many times by our circumstances. But when we stop kicking, and our inclination, just like the lamb, is, is to kick and kick and kick and really to, to generate, we'll, we'll, we can do it, we'll get ourselves upright. But it's only once we stop kicking that the good shepherd literally can take us in his arms, lift us, massage what needs to be massaged, and allow us to come upright. Our scripture today is a very powerful word. It's a metaphor. It's an allegory. It's talking about God, our Lord, and who he is. He's the good shepherd. Now, to give you a context for this, uh, this passage from the gospel of John, John 10, just to give you a context for it, in 9, Jesus heals a man who was born blind. And the Pharisees will have nothing to do with giving Jesus credit for this healing. So they're, they're, they're trying to find the angle. They're trying to, 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 to find a, a, a way that they can explain this. And what's interesting is as I read this gospel, I, I want you to keep in mind that the parents were, were being threatened, essentially, of, of being thrown out of the, the temple. Because the Pharisees would have nothing to do with this. They considered this heresy. So, so they were saying to the parents, you know, you, you've got to tell them that, that, that your son wasn't blind or, or come up with some sort of an excuse. And they said, he's old enough. He's, he, let him, he's a man. Let him tell you what happened. 
because they didn't want to jeopardize their position. And that's, Jesus references this in this description. This is now from the Gospel of John. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. And he was talking literally about the mother and father of this young man who was healed. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he has a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. This is what Jesus is saying. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. And we surely do. Thank you, God. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Indeed, you you do, dear Lord. Thank you, Father. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. It's talking of the Gentiles. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Praise be to God. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again eternally. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. Thank you, dear Lord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it back up again. The command I received, this command I received from my father. Praise you, dear God. What a powerful word and what a powerful illustration. I think that's probably my first first real picture of Jesus was as the good shepherd. Probably in, in the earliest days of Sunday school, back in Johnstown at Homestead Avenue, United Methodist Church, my mother would have been a Sunday school teacher And I remember in in her classroom a picture of Jesus holding a sheep and and other lambs around him, the good shepherd. That's how I envision, that's how I see Jesus as the good shepherd. So it's very, very important. This passage of Scripture is a challenge to us. We, we, we see the many faces of who the Lord is, the many roles that he plays in our life. But for this morning, what we're learning about are the three aspects of the excellency of the Lord's power. This is our lesson for today. And and there's one other passage of scripture just kind of as a setup for this. And it says, uh, this is Paul's uh, writing, and and he says, uh, praise be to God that, that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. He calls it a treasure because he says that the excellency of the power is of God and not of us. And that's a treasure. You better believe we need to thank God that it doesn't rest upon us, that life doesn't rest upon our power. And we have this treasure. It is a precious, more precious than gold, that the excellency of the power is of God and not of us. And then he goes on to say we're hard-pressed on every side. We have crazy circumstances. Bad things happen to us. But we're never, ever destroyed. The good shepherd is there for us. So let's take a look at the three aspects of the excellency of the power that is of the Lord. Number one is the Lord is our refuge and our strength. This is a wonderful passage from Proverbs, and it says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and are safe. I don't know about you, but can you remember the smell of the electric blanket. Raise your hand. Now you're dating yourself when you do this because I don't know that there have been electric blankets for the last, come on, I know that you know what electric blankets are. Okay. Electric blankets. And I remember there is a smell that I have in my mind that is, is more pungent than anything that I can remember back as a child. But when I would have a, a nightmare, when I would have a bad dream, and, and before I would be in school, I, I remember when, when I would have a nightmare that I would run over to my mom and dad's bedroom and, and I would get in between my mom and dad. They had an electric blanket on their bed and just that kind of a little bit electric and a lot wool, that smell, boy, I got to tell you, that was the good shepherd. 
Holly was talking about the, the wool and shearing the sheep and so forth. Man, that, those, that wool and electric smell, that combination, is the most secure smell to me. To this day, when I smell something like that, where there's the hint of a little bit of an electric smell with that wool, for me, that was so precious because in there I was safe. That's what the good shepherd is to us. He is our refuge and our strength. In Hebrew, the, the term is Jehovah Ra, the Lord, my shepherd. And what a beautiful promise we have in that, that he is our shepherd. He will take us where we need to go. He will do what, what, uh, uh, everything that we need for our safety and for our security. Thank you, dear God. The second aspect of the excellency of the Lord's power is that the Lord is our provider and our protector. This is a wonderful passage from Deuteronomy, and it says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. What a promise that is. He is faithful. I have to tell you, I'm not. You aren't. But he is. Thank you, dear God. In Hebrew, it's Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. And this means the Lord will provide. Can we say that? Can, can we acknowledge that and say amen? Dear God, you provide. You are faithful. All that I needed, thy hand hath provided. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. This from the book of Lamentations. New mercies I see. All that I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is your faithfulness, dear God, unto me. That you have a plan and you have a purpose for me, dear God, and for you. Thank you. Thank you, dear God. Who are we that you would have this precious anointing? on each of us. Thank you, Father. Think of the story when Isaac was with his father, Abraham, and they were on Mount Moriah. And, and he asked his father, where is this sacrifice? And I kind of think in my mind that a that little bit lightheartedly that, that Abraham would have said to him, Isaac, I have some good news and some bad news. We're going to give a sacrifice to the Lord today. Well, what's the bad news? It might be you. <laughs> but we know that God is faithful, that God provides. This was a test to Abraham and his faith and trust in God, not just a head knowledge, not just a, a, an intellectual acknowledgement that, well, yeah, there's a God in heaven. But dear God, I know who you are. The, the ancient of days. He is that he is. I am that I am. Is what the Bible tells us. He is. And when we acknowledge him, when we acknowledge him, he is faithful. In whatever crazy situation you might be in in your life, we somehow kind of hold back. Almost like Adam and Eve. In the garden, after they recognized their nakedness and they hid from God, they were embarrassed from God. And why are you hiding? Like, like somehow God's not going to know where you are. But literally, literally for us, we need to acknowledge Him as God, as our provider, and as our protector in every situation of our life. The last few years, I, Lucy and I have just experienced this specific anointing so many times, and it is precious to acknowledge God in those situations that years ago I'm not sure I would have acknowledged God in. I'm not sure that I would have had the trust in God. I'm not sure that I would have had the faith in God to trust in Him, to acknowledge God, I'm vulnerable here. This is a, a terrible situation. It was my own doing. And, and, and I'm, I'm uncomfortable acknowledging this to you. There is such extraordinary blessing when we acknowledge the highs, the lows, and everything in between before the Creator. Thank you, dear God. And now number three, the third aspect of the excellency of the Lord's power. 
is the Lord is our hope of eternal victory. Mm, thank you, dear God. And this is what we read in Psalm 27. This is a Psalm of David. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jehovah Nissi. Jehovah Nissi. The Lord is my banner. Literally, the Lord is my victory. You know the pride that we take when the Pirates win or when the Steelers win? My gosh, you'd think you ran for the touchdown. You know, people are so excited when they go to work on a Monday. Hey, hey, boy, those Steelers, you know, we did a pretty good job there yesterday. You didn't. You watched it on TV. What are you talking about? You know, I think to myself sometimes. But, but literally, we, we just, we internalize that and we translate that. That was my, oh, no, no I, I watched it. I, man, I, that was my victory. Well, how much more? Do we have that Jesus generously shares, graciously shares that victory with you and me? That we literally can go out and say that I'm victorious. That, oh, death, where is your victory? Sin, where where is that anymore? Thank you, dear God, for that precious gift that you allow us to share in your victory. It was your victory at the cross. It was your victory at the resurrection. It was your victory that you now give to us. And we literally can claim that as our own. John 3.16 is the, the most quoted of probably all of the New Testament scriptures. And I love it because it really says what our relationship with him is all about. That for God so loved the world, that what? He gave his only begotten son. Why? So that whosoever believeth should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's all of what he did, and now for us simply to receive. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I close with a final story. Um, One of the uh, power minutes that Lucy and I did last summer was a, a very special experience for us. It was at the Flight 93 Memorial. And in doing the research, we do a lot of research. We, we, Uh, try to pack a lot into that one minute and and so we want to be historically correct and accurate and we do a lot of research it it takes days to come up with with what the Holy Spirit will speak in in 50 seconds actually because there's an open and close so even less than a minute but as I was researching this I I I I didn't realize this I, I hadn't really heard this in the secular media But when the Flight 93, as it was heading to the West Coast, probably somewhere between Cleveland and Toledo, of course it was diverted then, and it was en route to Washington. And at some point, at some point in in that, as they were going, very shortly before they crash landed, they overtook the plane and they crash landed because they did not want that to do harm to what was a, a, a full session of Congress and, and the, nobody knew what the destination would be. They just knew that it would be Washington, but that it would be a, a lot of casualty there. And these men and women began to pray and led by Todd Beamer, they began to say the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And you anoint my head with oil. My cup of blessing overflows. Surely, may your goodness and mercy follow me all of the days of my life. And may we dwell with you, dear heavenly shepherd, forever and forever. May that be our prayer as a family today. May that be our petition to God. By acknowledge him, by being still just for this last moment and acknowledging him as God. Join me as we go to our Heavenly Father. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, thank you, dear God, for this day. 
and for all of the blessing that you bring to us. And dear God, we do acknowledge you for who you are, the, gr the great I am. And Father, we just pray for this time now. We just pray, Lord, from all of the chaos and commotion in, that's in our lives, we just pray that you would quiet our hearts and help us to be still. And Lord, what you say to us as a command to be still and know you as God, this is what the psalmist tells us. But Lord, we lift to you now this day as a prayer. And Father, we do indeed acknowledge you for who you are, the great I am. Thank you, Father. Father, we pray your blessing upon this church, upon the families that make up this church. We thank you, dear God, for our community, for our region, for our state, for our nation. And dear God, we pray that we would acknowledge you as a people, we pray, dear God, that in, in every aspect of our life in America, that we would acknowledge you as God. We would acknowledge you as creator. We would acknowledge you, dear God, as redeemer. We would acknowledge you, dear God, as provider and healer. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. We pray your blessing to be upon our church. We pray for Tony and Dottie, the Felici family and extended families. We praise you and we thank you, dear God, for this church and this ministry. We pray, dear God, for your light to shine brightly in each of us and in this church that others that are in the darkness of this world would be able to come to you and see you by your light in each of us. Bless us now, dear God, that we may be a blessing. You indeed are the great shepherd. And we pray this in Jesus' precious name. And all of God's people say, amen. The Lord is indeed our shepherd. We shall not want. He maketh us to lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside the still waters. And when we are downcast, he restores our soul. May you acknowledge him in your life today. Thank you. Once again, thank you for joining us in worship today. And remember our prayer is that you would be blessed and strengthened by the power of Jesus Christ in your life. And that you would live a life of abundance and fellowship, joy and liberty. Holiday Park Church is here for you. And we are more than the church. We are a fellowship of believers coming together to declare the glory of the Lord and celebrate Jesus as King. We study the Word, we practice what we learn, and in the process, we grow together, all to the glory of God. May God richly bless you.